Were there any times where both of you just thought, this is a dead end, this is not going to work? Um, and if there were, could you talk about those? How did you both get through those times? There's a, there's a lot of moments like that. You know, this, this molecule you know, had, had not been proposed or discovered as a central molecule, right? And so if you're going to bring something like that to market, I mean, you know, it's, there's a lot to be done. Even from, it didn't, you, no one manufactured it. And so we had to create a process and scale up that process to multiple tons. It takes a long time. And then, you know, from the intellectual property standpoint, you know, if we were going to put this investment in, probably good to have some kind of intellectual property, uh, I think it just went down here, um, uh, backing. And so we spent a lot of time working with Navy and with the tech transfer office and with IP attorneys um, to secure some of that IP. And so those are just two examples of, you know, the, the different things that, you have to do to t translate a discovery into actually a product. And that's not even talking about the scientific, you know, work that needs to be done from discovery um, to the point where you can have something available for people to actually ingest. Yeah, and, and Rob, you can imagine the two of us walking into a room of venture capitalists and who nobody knows, I've never heard of the Ben Watsons before as a veterinarian and a physician, their military family <laughs> coming in and we're pitching, hey, we think we've discovered the first essential fatty acid in 90 years. Oh, by the way, it's a saturated fat. And oh, by the way, we discovered it in dolphins, right? And so always, like in the, since the beginning, it's been an interesting story, but, get to, but to get to the point where it's like, oh, this is real. And if you're talking about you just discovered the next omega-3, you know, that took years. And the most important aspect of it, even though initial skepticism on the science front, which then we brought them in, learned from them, and, and was it, were able to grow the science and the credibility, um, but the ability to, um, Basically, the science always landed. So what kept us going was that we would have um, a skeptic come in and say, well, if this was true, then if you did this, X, you would get Y. We're like, oh, okay. So we would raise money from friends and family and do X. And we're like, oh, hey, here's Y. What should we do next? And so that it took five years of doing of those iterations that then led like to this paper in scientific reports, there are eight studies, all eight studies that we did to kind of answer those key questions, we held on to, waited until they all resulted in where they should have landed. And only then, because the science supported it, did we say, yeah, we're ready to start telling the world that a saturated fat is good for them. So, and we even got to the point where the science, um, our advisors said, hey, this has now moved from exciting research to a moral obligation, Steph and Eric, <laughs> to bring this to the world. So that's what kept us going, was really the, the validity and credibility of the science to the point where now we have an opportunity to truly improve global health, and now we, we just can't not do it. 